In the world of animals, there are many species without which it is impossible to imagine human civilization. Mammoths and elephants helped our ancestors to explore new continents. Horses became a convenient means of transportation. Cows gave milk, dogs guarded our homes, and now pose for TikToks. But without one inconspicuous animal, you and I probably wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Mice in lab coats, just kidding, they're not wearing lab coats, have actually played as big a role in science as the best actors in Hollywood blockbusters, except they don't get Oscars for it. Let's find out why mice are so cool. Imagine a science lab, such that even in horror movies do not meet, full of vials and flasks. And there, in the foreground, the real stuntmen of science, mice. Why? Because they're like our distant cousins in the genome. Yes, we're 90% genetically similar. So if something is bad for mice, chances are it's not good for us either. But it's not just the bond between us and the mice. It's also the fact that they are socially active and breed uh, quite successfully. This means that scientists can see in a short period of time what happens to several generations of rodents if, say, you add a little bit of a new miracle drug to their cheese, and then we can guess what would happen to humanity if we started ingesting this wonder drug with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, imagine you need to understand how our human existence works, from the colon to moral principles, but you're only given a couple of decades to do it all. Not an easy task, is it? Now add to that the economic charm and voila. As early as the 17th century, William Garvey used mice to study reproduction and circulation, and Robert Hooke used them to study the biological effects of increased atmospheric pressure. In the 19th century, breeding mice as pets became popular in Europe. Amateur mouse breeders had organized information on captive breeding long before scientists became interested in them. By cross-breeding mice with each other, they produced new breeds and took them to shows. Just like dog breeders show their pets today. The mice differed not only in coat color or ear shape, but also in behavior. In addition, some breeds were found to be predisposed to certain diseases, such as mammary tumors. That's when they attracted the attention of scientists. For example, there are breeds of mice that are sensitive only to the influenza virus or tuberculosis. This makes it possible to study the specifics of diseases and helps to develop more effective treatments. The truly scientific career of mice has only recently taken off since the beginning of the 20th century. Clarence Little, now that was the Michael Bay of rodent genetics, created the first superstar, an inbred line of mice where everything was just right, perfect for research, no genetic surprises. And then, then scientists realized that this was the jackpot and opened entire laboratories where they began to produce mice on a conveyor belt, each with the features they needed. Every year, scientists around the world use more than 120 million rats and mice in research. These rodents account for nearly 95% of all laboratory animals. Over the past four decades, the number of experiments involving mice and rats has more than quadrupled. In 2009, mice accounted for three times as many scientific papers as Danio fish, fruit flies, and ascarid worms combined. In the late 80s, scientists created a knockout mouse. Boxing had nothing to do with it. A knockout mouse is a genetically modified laboratory mouse in whose body a certain gene is purposely knocked out, i.e. turned off. It is knocked out by deleting or replacing it with a sequence of nucleotides. Why is this necessary? Why do scientists knock out genes? The idea is that by turning off certain genes, you can determine their functions, find out why they are needed and how they work. With this knockout, it is possible to pinpoint the exact function of each gene and therefore understand how cancer, diabetes, heart disease and other diseases develop. Most recently, in 2017, scientists studied more than 3,000 types of knockout mice and identified 67 genes associated with hearing impairment. Perhaps in the future, such studies could help determine the causes of deafness in humans. Knockout mice even brought their parents, i.e. the scientists who created them, the Nobel Prize in Medicine for 2007. 
It's not every day that the Swedish Academy honors good old mice with an award. Scientists are not fed with bread. Let them study the effects of weightlessness on unsuspecting animals, birds, and humans. The mice couldn't avoid a career in space either. Animals are sent into orbit to study possible health problems in humans during the flight. Scientists have studied astronaut mice, how muscles, bones, and blood function in microgravity. For example, astronauts not only atrophy their muscles during long flights, but also change their bone structure. To understand why this happens, scientists sent three wild-type mice and three knockout mice that had the very same trans gene into space. In parallel, a similar experiment was conducted on the ground, but under simulated flight conditions, to assess the effects of microgravity and compare the results. Unfortunately, during the flight half of the mouse crew died due to spinal cord damage and liver pathology, but the remaining mice showed normal behavior throughout the experiment and after landing felt fine. This experiment allowed scientists to find that the transgenic mice were less affected by weightlessness than their normal non-transgenic friends. Plans are underway to send the next M2 biosatellite where more research will be conducted. In the mid-1990s, Harvard scientists Joseph and Charles Vacanti grew cartilage in the shape of a human ear on the back of a laboratory mouse. This example of tissue engineering showed the potential for tissue growth and transplantation that could revolutionize reconstructive surgery and trauma treatment. Thus was born the ear mouse, or vacante mouse, if you prefer the more formal name. The result of the experiment really exceeded all expectations. The ears grown from the children's own cells were functional and outwardly indistinguishable from normal ears. Thanks for this can be said not only to the same mouse from the 90s. In 2018, a team of Chinese scientists used the technology to grow ears for five children with microtia, a rare genetic disorder that causes underdevelopment of the eardrum. The ear transplant surgeries were successful and the children received new ears that looked and functioned like normal ears. This result confirmed that the technology of growing ears from a person's own cells is safe and effective. Do you know why such huge elephants are afraid of such small mice? Good question. The story about the complex relationship between grey giants and small rodents was launched by the Roman philosopher Pliny the Elder in his Natural History somewhere in 77 AD. Since then, the issue has been repeatedly studied and even conducted experiments. According to the most widespread version, the reason for the panic fear of elephants before mice is that the giants cannot resist small rodents that bite them for souls and can even pull off a piece of the other. But this is only a baze. The mouse does not eat elephants at all and does not even bite them out of harm's way. Another explanation looks like this. Allegedly, mice can get into the trunk, cutting off oxygen to the huge animal, and it will suffocate. We will not find out what a small animal may need inside the trunk, and immediately confess this version is also not true. Elephant researchers from all over the world are sure that even if a mouse gets into the trunk, the elephant will easily throw it out. In fact, shovel-eared giants are not afraid of mice, but of the rustle they can produce. The fact is that usually large predators like lions, leopards or tigers rustle when sneaking up on elephants. Therefore, such sounds serve as a danger signal. And it's not just about mice. Any animals that make sudden movements can alert the elephant. It doesn't have to be mice. Dogs, cats, snakes and any other animal can also alarm the trunk owner. So when you see a moose cleverly running a maze or swimming in a mini pool, know this. These aren't just mimics for scientists. These are small steps toward big discoveries that could one day save your heel when it's suddenly in danger. That's the kind of thing it is. 